Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, the U.S. Capitol is briefly evacuated last night after police identified an aircraft that they said posed a probable threat. We're going to tell you why it wasn't. Outside with live cam, Mike says we have settled into that uh, late spring, early summer pattern. He'll update us on a chance of showers and storms in the extended forecast. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, April 21st. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good afternoon yesterday. This morning it feels especially humid. Very humid. And Mike, you asked us yesterday if I saw any sprinkles on the windshield on the way in this morning. Today, I did. You did? I did. I did not. So it's going to go. be very few and far between here and there. You didn't see anything? I didn't. Either. either. Okay, so a little bit of mist or drizzle here, there, so watch out for damp spots on the roads. Nothing uh, of any consequence. You know, it's just that, that nuisance kind of stuff. So just slow down if you are hitting the roads early this morning. Lots of low clouds hanging around here. You can almost see with those low clouds the uh, the humidity. Yeah, 73 degrees right now. We'll drop down a couple of more notches, but yes, we are warmer than what we were at this time yesterday. 68 Bernie stage. That's at that in Los Maple. That's a cool spot, if you can believe. Everybody else is in the low 70s, uh, more than 10 degrees above the average low temperature. And of course, these numbers remain very high. The dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, it's going to be sticking around through the day and the next couple of days. Yes, it is a different day, but it feels just like yesterday, or like we said, even warmer. It's going to feel the same tomorrow, Saturday. Then we'll talk about those changes coming in. Oak did drop down from the previous day's reading. Mold is still high. Both of those on the high side, pine and pecan are both low and this morning we will bottom out right around 70 degrees again of roughly 10 above normal cloudy skies maybe a speck of mist here or there uh, very few and far between but just kind of watch that if the roads are damp 88 for a high temperature later on today most of the cloudy skies is going to be breezy once again southeasterly wind 10 20 miles per hour and then gusting at times to about 25 again same thing the next couple of days then we do have those rain chances and it's still looking encouraging for rain late Sunday and then especially on Monday. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A man accused of stealing a U.S. Paralympians medals is in custody. San Antonio police arrested Rogelio Solis several days after the car break in on Saturday night. Now, since then, the video has been watched almost three million times. Paralympian Jen Lee says he is relieved to have his medals back just in time for a trip to the White House. Now that just, you know, having it back and, and able to do that with my teammates, it will be something that, again, it's just like another, another great uh, memories, but also something to cherish forever as well. Lee and the U.S. Paralympic team are scheduled to meet President Biden at the White House next month. Well, now to chaos at the U.S. Capitol last night. The entire Capitol complex was quickly evacuated due to a probable threat. It turns out it was all a big misunderstanding. ABC's Dion Lim has the latest. This morning, lawmakers demanding answers after a false alarm triggered a full evacuation of the U.S. Capitol. Yes, sir, we're going to parachute jump at the uh, National Stadium and uh, like to proceed to point when able. The confusion caused by a stunt plane scheduled to fly over the Washington Nationals baseball game in honor of Military Appreciation Night. But before the plane could get to the ballpark, the chaos began. Like, I think it was a miscommunication. You should not be on me. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to hand you off to uh, Crant and figure out what exactly you're supposed to be doing because you're a well above my altitude and uh, be this helicopter frequency. The Capitol Police mistook the plane for an unauthorized aircraft. Officers immediately issued an alert warning government workers to evacuate now, saying they were tracking an aircraft that poses a probable threat to the Capitol complex. It took nearly half an hour for police and aviation officials to clear up the confusion. And as people filed back into the Capitol, the stunt went on as planned. But now lawmakers are blaming the FAA for the chaos. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi calling the confusion inexcusable, writing in a statement overnight, the unnecessary panic caused by this apparent negligence was particularly harmful for members, staff and institutional workers still grappling with the trauma of the attack on their workplace on January 6th. Pelosi is demanding accountability for what she calls an outrageous and frightening mistake. The FAA says it will conduct a thorough review. Dion Lim, ABC News, New York. This morning, the FDA is warning parents against relying on the results of non-invasive genetic prenatal screening tests. The products use sample blood from a pregnant woman to look for abnormalities in the fetus's chromosomes. But the FDA says the tests are not always reliable. According to the FDA, the tests could have false results 
people could inappropriately use them or results could just be misinterpreted. The FDA advises the product should be used for screening purposes only and should not be used to make critical health care decisions. Russia is releasing a video of an intercontinental ballistic missile test as it presses forward with its new offensive in Ukraine. Now, Russia says the missile was launched yesterday in northern Russia, traveling across the country to a test site in the Far East. The missile is designed to replace a Soviet-era model, and Russia claims it can carry multiple nuclear warheads and has a range of more than 6,000 miles, making it potentially capable of striking the U.S. A senior U.S. defense official still said the launch was not something that would be done by a responsible nuclear power in the current tense environment. A new study has found that more pets are being poisoned by marijuana plants and edibles than in the past, and some even die. They found that cases of cannabis poisoning occurred most frequently in dogs, but other animals suffered too, including cats, iguanas, ferrets, horses, and cockatoos. A study found that most pets recovered sometimes after 24 to 48 hours in a veterinary hospital. 16 dogs died after ingesting marijuana. Right now, 436, about 73 degrees. And still ahead, why a new law that's supposed to protect people from surprise medical bills has some loopholes. And a huge victory last night on the soccer pitch. San Antonio FC, FC taking on their I-35 rivals, Austin FC. We have highlights of that shocking upset win. And taking a look out at the roads with Trans Guide, see some flashing lights out at their Loop 1604 and Kitty Hawk Road. Looks like a lane is closed over there. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos later on. He says it's tech stock crews working on the road. Okay, looking at live cam right now, it's early. Glad you're with us as we start your day here on GMSA. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. Well, Cowboys Vice President Stephen Jones raised a few eyebrows after what he had to say about the Cowboys offseason moves that have come into question by some fans. More specifically, the team's decision to move on from Amari Cooper and instead take their chances on CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup for the future at wide receiver. It's even after Gallup will not start the season in September, still recovering from surgery to repair a torn ligament. Jones answered the concerns on Dallas radio station The Fan when questioned about these offseason moves. I don't think you ever win the Super Bowl in the offseason. Uh, I think it's a full body of work, what you put together over time, and uh, I certainly appreciate that. I mean, uh, the biggest thing of all is, uh, you know, is it's been a long time since uh, we have won a championship, and no one appreciates that more than myself, than Jerry. Uh, than the people in this organization that we, you know, you, you've got to get over the hump. At the same time, we didn't last year with that uh, same group of players. And, you know, sometimes uh, you let a player move on and it allows other players to step up uh, in even a bigger role. And uh, whether that's a C.D. Lamb or a Michael Gallup, uh, I know, uh, you know, Amari was a great player for us. Uh, but this, uh, you know, might allow uh, uh, certainly – uh, CD and, and, and Michael to step up. Out of soccer, let the I-35 rivalry begin. MLS is Austin FC visiting USL San Antonio FC in the third round of the Hunt US Open. SAFC down 1-0 until the 83rd minute. Forward Justin Dillon gathers the pass, regains balance, fires in the box. Elliot Collier pokes it past the keeper for the equalizer. Would go to extra time where SAFC would add another goal in the 96th minute. So it's a big upset victory for San Antonio FC. Final score, 2-1. Out of Missions Baseball, Game 2 against the Amarillo Sod Poodles. Missions hoping to end a seven-game losing streak. The Missions put themselves in scoring position right away in the top of the first, but good luck would run out. Amar Amarillo ended up getting more runners home in their 7-4 victory last night. The Missions have now lost eight in a row. Mm, sod Ouch. Poodles are kind of tough. They are tough. So the Missions are due yeah, for are. a win or for another loss. No, a win. A win. <laughs> yes, yes. A win. That's what we meant. <laughs> Time now, 441 and 73 degrees for now. A new law is supposed to protect your you from surprise medical bills, but it turns out there are some loopholes. What you should know before you visit the ER. And next, first look at how much more you'll have to pay for airfare during the summer months. And welcome back. It's 444. If you're planning to travel this summer, expect to pay more for airfare, and that's thanks to an increase in demand. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, as the summer travel season approaches, the masks come off, at least for now. Excitement building for the so-called summer of revenge travel. United CEO saying overnight, the demand is the strongest it's been in my 30 years in the industry. Much of it is pent up demand that our travelers who haven't traveled or have traveled minimally in the last two summers because of COVID. But that also means higher prices. Average domestic airfare now spiking up to $360. It was $100 less this time last year. This summer, Americans can expect to pay more for airfare than they have paid in the last 10 years. But there are deals to be found. But we're still seeing rapid fare sales all the time. And coming up at 7 a.m., tips for how to save and stay safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Nobody likes surprises when it comes to medical bills. And this year, a new federal law kicked in called the No Surprises Act. However, as 12 on our sides, Marilyn Morris explains it doesn't cover everything. Surprise medical bills. It's a problem millions of people with private health insurance have faced for years. Now there's a new law designed to help. The No Surprises Act means that you'll no longer receive an unexpected medical bill because you were treated by a doctor or you went to a medical facility that you didn't choose in the first place. That's right, no more surprise bills from emergency room doctors or other out-of-network hospital providers like anesthesiologists and radiologists when you get care at an in-network facility. The Kaiser Family Foundation estimates the No Surprises Act will apply to as many as 10 million surprise bills every year. While it may sound great, the law has some glaring holes. Take urgent care facilities. Visits are only covered by this new law if it's licensed as an emergency provider. But how do you know that? Well, it's really best if you can prepare ahead of time and call several in your area and ask simply if they're licensed to provide emergency medical services. And then there are lab tests done at your doctor's office. Be sure to use a lab that's in network. Since the law is pretty new, hospital and providers are still adjusting to the new rules, which means they could accidentally send you a medical bill. If that happens, contact your insurance company to see what's going on. You may need to call your provider to resubmit the claim for full coverage. If that doesn't work, you can file a federal complaint online at cms.gov. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, uh, just a little while ago, we saw some flashing lights out at 1604 near Kitty Hawk, and they literally just drove off the screen seconds ago. So that was a tech stock crew apparently doing some maintenance, according to our Stephen Cavazos, who joined us at the top of the hour. Yeah, things are looking good now. Yeah, really good. And uh, we, we saw damp roads yesterday, mm -hmm. a whole you, lot of problems. You saw sprinkles. Just a few sprinkles a near the airport earlier this morning, my coaster H. And, and this is going to be very few and far between uh, as far as the actual reporting areas. Nothing mm -hmm. being reported, but that doesn't mean obviously in your neighborhood, in your backyard, there may be a little bit of that uh, mist and drizzle. And that's what we'll be dealing with tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning with all this uh, humidity around here. Great looking picture. You know, we had a lot of clouds in the morning yesterday and then they started to break up up somewhat and uh, yeah, a couple of folks saw some pretty nice looking sunsets. Thank you for the uh, KSAC connect picture. All right, and there's no uh, well, obviously we're looking off to the west here, but sunrise is not going to be anything to uh, really write home about this morning with all these clouds hanging around here. And as far as the humidity now, this is not a big jump, but it's actually a little bit more humid this morning, uh, up about uh, one, two, three degrees. Dew point temperatures are compared to this time yesterday, which you know, like I said, it's not a lot, but does make a difference and temperatures are going to be staying very steady throughout the next few hours. Uh, we may drop another couple of degrees going for bottoming out at 70 with lots of clouds around here this morning. And then we'll start to see like yesterday about the same timeline profile sunshine starting to peak out somewhat by roughly mid morning. We make it up into the mid and upper 70s 80 by noon wind picks up as well. It's going to be out of the south southeast at about 10 20 miles per hour gusting at times and then we'll top off later on today at 88 degrees. So yes, definitely on the warm side of things. Normal high is right around 81. That 88 though is going to be feeling like 91. We will have somewhat of a heat index to deal with even though the humidity is going to try and drop down as it usually does somewhat in the afternoon, still enough of it out there to add a few degrees to the actual air temperatures as far as what it's going to feel like. And again, nothing is going to be changing as far as the humidity goes all the way through the weekend and first part of the week. And then look at that. We get a nice little break with 
a front that's going to be moving through here. That's what's going to give us the chance for some rain. So we have our pattern morning clouds, some afternoon sunshine. That will be the situation again. Like I said, tomorrow, maybe some drizzle out there, a little bit of fine mist in your neighborhood and then some more uh, sunshine in the afternoon. Saturday morning, a little bit of mist here or there, some sunshine in the afternoon and Sunday. Yes, the trend continues. Then by the afternoon, though, we are going to keep more clouds around here. We'll start to see that rain chance move on into the picture, and that especially is going to be later Sunday night and then moving across the area into early Monday morning and throughout much of the day on Monday. As of right now, going for at least about a 50% chance for showers, even a couple of thunderstorms throughout the afternoon going into Monday evening, as well as overnight and a few of these leftovers early on Tuesday morning, plus with that front that's actually going to trim temperatures off. We get a break in the temperatures we will only be in the 70s by Monday and Tuesday. So once again, I've been saying the past couple of days, it's always encouraging when long range computer models still have that nice consistency to them, which is what this is the situation right now. 80 today at noon, most of the cloudy skies and high temperature. Yep, it's going to be a hot one. 88 feel a few degrees warmer than that. Windy as well. And then tomorrow, we do it all over again. Some maybe mist drizzle around the area. Breezy upper 80s. Same thing on Saturday. Sunday still very warm. Then we have the chance for some rain moving in here later Sunday and that front comes in here. Now that combined with the rain and the clouds going to keep temperatures only in the upper 70s by Monday 80 on Tuesday. Look at those low temperatures though by Tuesday. Yeah. 58 degrees is going to be very pleasant and the best news on that seven days. The fact that yes, it is encouraging for some rain chances on late Sunday and especially through the day on Monday. We'll see if it comes together, but it's looking like our best organized chance of showers and storms in a while. Yes, indeed. And like I said, the consistency with the long range computer models, mm -hmm. that's really good. And that consistency keeps up. Obviously, that's going to give us that good rain chance. Good news. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Fun. Thank you very much, Mike. 452, about 73 degrees. And coming up next, the return of the Kardashians is a hit for Hulu. And the second season of The Flight Attendant debuts today. We have your lottery numbers, then a big Powerball update. Pick three numbers, 383, Fireball 0. Your daily four numbers, 1221, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 5, 6, 20, 21, 25. And a lot of Texas, 5, 13, 15, 34, 38, 48. Your Powerball numbers, 20, 30, 45, 55, 56. Powerball 14, Power Play 2, nobody won. So Powerball's up to 400 million. Good luck. Five till the flight attendant starts its second season and the Kardashians are getting a warm welcome on Hulu. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. If you thought season one was wild, season two is going to be one trip you will never forget. Season two of The Flight Attendant takes off today. Kaylee Cuoco, Rosie Perez, and friends are back for more high-flying drama, intrigue, and spying. And Perez tells me since she first put on the uniform last season, she has a newfound respect for those who look after us in the sky. Having to know how a plane operates, having to be the people to keep calm just in case something goes wrong, um, having to deal with unruly passengers, you know, does my heart just just it just goes out to them the first two episodes of season two of the flight attendant are out today on hbo max i think it's time to see a whole new side of the family the return of the kardashians is a hit for hulu the streaming service says last week's premiere of the kardashians reality series was hulu's most watched series premiere in the u.s though what that looks like exactly we don't know hulu didn't give numbers Hulu is owned by Disney, the parent company of ABC News. Well, uh, this was your special request. As the new season of Red Table Talk debuts on Facebook, host Jada Pinkett Smith felt she needed to address the elephant in the room, her husband Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. At the beginning of the new show, a statement from the actress says the family is focusing on deep healing and some of the discoveries around their healing will be shared at the table when the time calls. And Loki star Gugu Mbatha Ra with a birthday today, she's 39, while actor Tony Danza is 71. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 457 and 73 degrees for now. Still ahead on the morning show, the Justice Department plans to appeal a court ruling that struck down the order to wear masks while traveling. Why the move is unlikely to have any real effect anytime soon.
And do you need a new car? We're going to tell you about BMW's all new electric sedan and its high price tag coming up in Tech Bytes. And check out the road to a trans guide right now. What the heck is going on at 90 Montgomery? I guess continued construction out there. A rare live look at that from a different vantage point. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. We'll talk to him coming up in a matter of minutes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Testimony of the Jonathan Johnson capital murder trial enters its third day. Today, the lead detective is set to take the stand. The mask mandate that was just lifted is now being challenged in court. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the reasons for the appeal. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 73 degrees and it is super humid out there. Super humid. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 21st. Mike is talking about the best chance of rain we have seen around here in a very long time. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, maybe that humidity will pay off eventually. Yes, it is going to get squeezed out. And, you know, sometimes it's a little, you know, we, we kind of hold back a little bit getting this uh, enthusiastic about rain, which is still right now about four or five days out but it's been really consistent with long range computer models and it's looking pretty good. And we're talking about for late Sunday and especially on Monday. In the meantime, yes, the humidity is actually up slightly compared to yesterday. Temperatures are also warmer than what they were at this time. 73 degrees right now. That bottom number dew points at 68. Not to the point where it's really fogging up your glasses or that wet towel feel, but it almost feels like that 88 for a high temperature then later on today. As far as the aquifer yesterday's reading, it did go up six tenths of a foot. So that was good news kind of negated the uh, big drop that we had the previous day. Still, we have stage two water restrictions. Oak and mold are both on the high side, although oak did come down from the previous day's reading. Can't wait for that season to end. Here's what it looks like as far as temperatures right now. Everybody, most everybody's in the 70s. Got a couple of 60s, upper 60s out toward the hill country, but most everybody Everyone is still right about uh, 10, 12, 13 degrees above the average, the normal low temperatures this time of year. And of course, these numbers remain very high. You get above that threshold of 60 and there's a lot of humidity out there. And then when you get the two points in the 70s, that's the really, really humid air, of course. And we'll see a slight drop in the humidity in the afternoon hours, but it's not going to be enough to really make that much of a difference. We'll still have a slight bit of a, a heat index and this is going to continue each and every day the next couple of days. And we'll talk more about these rain chances coming in here on Monday. And yep, that is a front on that graphic. That's going to knock uh, some of this heat out of here temporarily. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we are taking a look here. US 90 at Montgomery. This is a shot as we went to commercial break. We are actually seeing some bridge work that should be wrapping up within the next few minutes, hopefully. But of course, we are still spotting those flashing lights out there. So we want to remind drivers, take it easy and make sure to watch out for those tech stock crews. They have had a busy night. Let's go ahead and start here with the wide look at the map. Uh, we're not seeing slowdowns that are taking place which is some good news, but let's talk about what we are seeing there off of US 90 and when we can expect that to wrap. So if you are familiar with the area, you know that bridge work has been taking place there. It's been current, but should be wrapping on April 22nd. That's tomorrow. But keep in mind for those overnight or early morning commuters, nine in the evening to five in the morning. You can expect a full closure of the main lanes in both directions right there at Montgomery Road. Thankfully, we're not seeing the slowdowns that are taking place in that direction. If you're traveling in from any of these communities, still pretty pleasant from Pleasanton 37 North northbound with 28 minutes, 19 minutes coming in from Castroville on Highway 90 and 16 coming up from 35 northbound and Lytle. So these flashing lights are better than what we were seeing yesterday. There was tons of crashes, so thankfully it has been a quiet morning so far, but we'll continue to keep our eyes on the road. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Today is day three of testimony in the Jonathan Johnson capital murder trial. Over the first two days, we've heard testimony from witnesses, detectives and forensics ex a scientists. Court reporter Eric Hernandez shows us what we can expect the rest of the week. The first two days of testimony has revealed possible motive in this case, as well as how the investigation led to the arrest of the defendant Jonathan Johnson. 
this deadly shooting happened at the Robin's Nest Apartments off Hotwells Boulevard back in 2019. The state's main witness, Angelica Rangel, was shot at during that incident but survived. She told jury that she believed she was the target of the shooting after getting a threat from her friend who she was having an argument with over added phone lines to her phone account without her permission. Later, detectives said that during questioning of Angelica, she claimed a man named Chris was the shooter, but through a photo lineup, identified Johnson as the shooter, who she said was introduced to her as Chris. Crime scene investigators collected more than a dozen shell casings from the scene, and a firearms examiner was able to determine that while there was no firearm recovered, all the casings came from the same 9mm semi-automatic pistol. As for what we can expect today, the state will be putting its last witness on the stand. That is the lead detective in this case, and we'll have more on that testimony later this afternoon. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. An 18-year-old accused of supplying guns to gangs is now in custody. The Bear County Sheriff's Department says Damian Mermella is now under arrest after a multi-agency operation. BCSO, the Texas Anti-Gang Unit, and other law enforcement executed a search warrant on Gloria Street last week. That's near Zarzamora and Northwest 36, and that's where they say they found a gun in almost every room along with marijuana, ammunition, and a lot of cash. Governor Greg Abbott set to visit San Antonio later today. He plans to hold a roundtable discussion on law enforcement issues and safety. It's a shift after Abbott faced backlash for a border policy change and added truck inspections that cost Texas money and put a strain on the supply chain. It was just last week, DPS troopers were told to stop every commercial truck and check things like tire pressure, headlamps, and engines. The governor says he ended those extra inspections after working at a deal with governors down in Mexico. Troopers are scheduled to be a part of today's roundtable. It will start at 3.30 at the main office for the Deputy Sheriff's Association of Bear County. Now to the battle over the federal mask mandate. The CDC asking the Department of Justice to appeal the federal judge's ruling in Florida that overturned the federal travel mask mandate on airplanes and public transportation. ABC's Aika Jachi is in Washington with more. This morning, the Justice Department officially filing an appeal of a Florida judge's ruling that overturned the nation's travel mask mandate. It comes at the official request from the CDC. In a statement, the agency says an order requiring masking in the indoor transportation corridor remains necessary for the public's health. The department is also taking into account precedent, not letting a judge decide public health policy. For current and future public health crises, uh, we want to preserve that, that uh, authority for the CDC to have in the future. I think it's really important that they actually appeal that, uh, that ruling because I think it is important that we are able to switch back to putting masks again if there's another big variant. Since the mandate reversal, a chorus of public health experts speaking out, denouncing the decision. This change in policy sets a really challenging precedent. A single judge overturning a mandate driven by public health professional means that we're unnecessarily putting many people at risk. It comes as COVID cases are on the rise. According to Health and Human Services, new infection rates have grown by nearly 23% in the last week. 36 states and territories have seen increases of about 10% or more in that same time. Hospital admissions are up too. And in Milwaukee, school officials there have reinstated the district's mask mandate just a day after it shifted to a mask optional policy, citing a significant transmission of the virus within city limits. For now, the masking rules on public transportation remain inconsistent. No masks needed on flights, but you may need to put one on inside the airport, depending upon which city you land in. But I'm here in Philadelphia. There is an indoor mask mandate, yet I'm seeing so many people without masks, so it's really quite confusing. The CDC's concern goes beyond this mandate, which was set to expire on May 3rd. They want to have the authority Authority to put masks back on in the future just in case of another surge. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. 508, about 73 degrees. And still ahead, how Instagram is making some changes in order to get better content on your phone. And next, an update on upcoming performances by the San Antonio Symphony following the recent firing of its conductor and music director. And taking a look outside with live pan. Yeah, pretty humid this morning at 73 degrees, but Maybe all that humidity will pay off with some rain later. We're going to be checking in with Mike about those chances.
The San Antonio Symphony has been silent, not performing a single concert in six months. Musicians went on strike following the board's plan to reduce staff, cut pay, and cut health benefits. Despite ongoing negotiations, the symphony board and musicians have not yet reached a deal. Many scheduled concerts for the season have been canceled. The music director, Sebastian Lang Lessing, was fired after the board discovered he would be performing in a non-official symphony concert put on by the musicians of the San Antonio Symphony. And he feels as retribution for his outspoken support for the musicians. This is semantics in a contract that is used as a vindictive effort against actually the initiative of the musicians. And that's, you know, my situation I'm just collateral damage in something that has been going on for six months. It seems very clear to us that their interest is not really in preserving a fully professional orchestra in San Antonio. And meanwhile, the CEO of the symphony says they are focused on coming to an agreement to save the remaining of the season. The musicians of the San Antonio Symphony will perform tonight and tomorrow at the First Baptist Church of San Antonio at 7.30. Tickets will be sold online. A free family concert will take place Saturday at 10 a.m. Let's hope they work it out soon. 5.13, about 73 degrees. And still ahead, Best Buy launching an electronics recycle program, but the price might have you looking elsewhere. Mm, okay, we'll show you more about the new BMW luxury electric sedan and how much it will cost you. I assumed dust always stayed put. Turns out it can be on the move. We were breathing that day and night. That's when we started using Swiffer. In just a few minutes, Duster captures dust before it gets airborne. It traps and locks dust in one swipe. Yes. For our floors, Sweeper's heavy-duty cloths easily trap dust, dirt, and hair. Locking it in. See you, dust. And Swiffer partners with the American Lung Association to support clean air. Oh, allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin, and on first dose, provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. You're probably thinking that these two are in some sort of lover's quarrel. No, 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 no. They're both invested in green energy and also each other. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop. What would you like the power to do? In today's Tech Bytes, Instagram wants you to leave your TikToks on TikTok instead of reposting them to Reels. The platform is changing its ranking algorithm to favor original content, so creators will now get more credit for their original videos and photos, helping them to build audiences. Just in time for tomorrow's Earth Day, Best Buy has launched a service to haul away your old devices. A crew will now come to your home, remove and recycle two large items like a refrigerator or a range for $199. The same fee covers an unlimited number of smaller items. And prepare to dig deep if you are thinking about buying one of BMW's electric luxury sedans. The i7's battery has a range of about 300 miles and features a massive theater screen for rear passengers. Brace yourselves, starting price $120,000. Those are your Tech Bytes. I'm Dion Lim. Have a great day. Steph wasn't impressed till the very end there when we saw the screen in the back yeah. seat. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's like right. the IMAX for a car. Yeah, that's $120,000. Over, starting at one hundred twenty k. Yeah. yeah, but it's not the little monitors behind the headrest. We it's could, like a full yeah. screen. We could go in it together, guys. We could <laughs> truly ride share. Who gets to watch TV, though? Well, yeah. We're going to fight over the remote. You right. can yeah. watch the TV. I right. will, I'll do the driving. It sounds like that? a plan. Sounds good. Yeah, wow. but you guys what buy the coffee and the tacos. Authority. Well, let's get a look at what's going on here at US 90, because we can navigate through all this construction that's going on out there. Uh, we have been seeing this taking place. Started around 9 last night. Hopefully, these textile crews will be wrapping up pretty soon, but it does look like it could be a little while. They are working on some bridge repairs or bridge work, I should say. So make sure that you give them plenty of time and plenty of room, but make sure you give yourself that time as well. Uh, thankfully, nothing big that's going to cause any slowdowns at this hour. But let's talk about some drive times while we're over here on the northwest side. If you are traveling on State Highway 16, otherwise known as Bandera Road, getting in from Bandera 1604 to 410 is about a nine minute drive time. And same goes nine minutes, 410 to 1604. But be prepared because there is still some road work taking place, some bridge construction here that is current until tomorrow 9 in the evening until 5 in the morning. This is over off loop 1604. Now keep in mind there is an eastbound main link full closure at Bandera Road to Kyle Seal Parkway. So just be prepared for that, but nothing big that's going to cause any slowdowns just
just yet. And I believe hopefully we have that QR code. We can pop up on the screen right now. There it is. Uh, we'll give you a few seconds to bring out your phone, open your camera app and scan your screen right now. That will take you directly to the case at traffic page. What that will have is not just a full list of closures in your area, but any place that you plan on commuting. Keep in mind, our tweets are also embedded in that page. So if there's anything that's causing any issues for your traffic uh, morning commute, we'll let you know. All right, you popped it up and I real quick timed that out to see how fast it would yeah, take I saw me you to. Doing it. it took what? Two seconds, yeah, two maybe, seconds. maybe yeah. three. Hopefully your phone's close. Close, close by, by right yeah. within yes. reach and, okay. and good news though we're going to do it again at 615 okay. so it is pretty helpful so yes sir two okay. seconds stay on this on this shot for a second okay. here isn't okay. it weird looking at a crane instead of from the ground up kind of eye level oh right the, yeah. right the trans guy view yeah, yeah. we're yeah. looking like, down like at a like crane. yeah like this yeah it's just it's just so <laughs> it odd weird. looking because usually you're kind of go oh yeah look at the top of the crane so i don't know it's, it's the little things that fascinate <laughs> me of course so all right uh yesterday afternoon we did see the clouds break up as expected and this is what i'm forecasting for today and obviously temperatures are very dependent upon this if you get bigger hole in the clouds right over where the thermometer is. Obviously things are going to be heating up, but it's uh, this is what I'm going for as far as the the cloud cover later on today. More clouds than sunshine. Some mixed on in there. Plenty of clouds right now and yeah, there's a ton of humidity out there. Temperatures. We are at 73 at the airport. 75 right now. Pleasanton. Everybody's in the low 70s. These are average normal low temperatures at the hottest time of the year, which is right around late July, the first couple of weeks of August. So that's what it feels like this morning. We're more than 10 degrees above normal right now. And of course, there's all that humidity with the dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere, way up there, upper 60s and 70s. Now, we will see a slight drop in the dew point temperatures, as is usually the case in the afternoon. So it won't be as humid, but still enough humidity out there to where we are gonna have a It'll feel about two, three degrees warmer than the actual air temperature, somewhat of a heat index. Humidity comes back up then in the morning hours, drops down somewhat in the afternoon tomorrow, and we go through that cycle each and every day. And as far as temperatures today, we'll drop down a couple of more degrees this morning. Lots of clouds around here. Then we start to see the holes in the clouds as the morning rolls on mid to late morning. We get in the upper 70s, 80 today at noon and then top off today again. Mixture of sunshine and clouds leaning more toward the the cloudy side 88 for a high temperature and it's also going to be windy with winds out of the south at about uh, 15 20 miles per hour gusting on top of that very very warm low temperatures. But by Tuesday, we're down in the upper 50s, actually below normal by Tuesday. And then the high temperatures, we are going to be staying well above normal all the way in through the end of the weekend. And then we get that front moving on through there. So that's going to knock temperatures down, at least to normal levels, at least temporarily. And then it kind of warms back up the middle of next week. 80 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. And then high temperature makes it up to 88 and add a couple of notches to that. And that's what it's going to feel like with that uh, extra humidity hanging around here. And then tomorrow we do it all over again. By the way, watch out for, you know, a speck of mist or drizzle. Did you see any drizzle or anything? Did. You did, I'll say. And a little bit, just so a little bit. Half the group saw some mist coming in this morning. Half of us did not. I did not. Uh, that may, may be what you see today, tomorrow <laughs> morning, Saturday morning, and then Sunday night late and Monday, we've got a better chance for some rain. It's, it's looking still very optimistic been consistent long range forecast. So this is yeah, this, this is hopefully going to be a good one. Well, considering we're in stage two, yeah. anything would help, right? Well, oh, yeah, it, I mean, anything helps, but we need a lot, not a lot. just anything, just but a not, lot of things not to, to over. Right. We, we would need that over a week or two, not just over a day or two. Yeah. Correct. OK, but we'll take this for right now. Yes, yes for sir. now. Thank you, Mike. 523, about 73 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, Vin Diesel reveals the new Fast X title, plus how you can get two for one movie tickets. 526, get ready for yet another Fast and Furious movie, plus details on the investigation into the movie Rust. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. I never thought about the wild missions we've been on. The next Fast and Furious movie is going Roman, and I don't mean Tyrese Gibson's character. Vin Diesel revealed on Instagram the title of the 10th film in the franchise is Fast X. It's due in theaters May 19th, 2023. 
A state investigation has found the Rust movie crew willfully violated safety rules on the New Mexico set last October when actor Alec Baldwin fatally shot cinematographer Helena Hutchins. The report says the film's production management team knew gun safety procedures were not being followed, and the crew, quote, demonstrated plain indifference to employee safety. The state has fined the production company nearly $137,000, the maximum allowed by state law. I can explain. I'm shaking. It's the shock. Shock, yes, I'm shocked. There's a stolen masterpiece in my wardrobe. The Duke, starring Jim Broadbent and Helen Mirren, is based on the true story of a taxi driver who stole a Goya portrait from the National Gallery in London. Angelica Film Center theaters are offering two-for-one tickets starting Friday as part of the Bring a Friend Back to the Movies campaign. Info at Angelica, with a K, filmcenter.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 527 and 73 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, today lawmakers in Florida are likely to vote to take away Disney's ability to run itself independently. What that means for Disney going forward. And still ahead, details on an important pr produce recall for items sold at Texas Walmarts. And there's a new special flavor for Halo Top ice cream. We'll tell you when you can get it and why the company is changing its recipe. Making headlines this morning, Florida lawmakers are set to vote to do away some of, with some of Disney's power today. We'll tell you why. And taking a look outside with live cam, very humid this morning, but we do have chances of rain down the line that look very hopeful. They sure do. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is April 21st. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, we're really hoping that rain pulls through. What do you think, Mike? Well, on Monday, it's looking very encouraging. Late Sunday into Monday. This is, uh, as of right now, it's looking like the best chance we've had for some uh, some decent rain in a long time. More on that in a second. As far as this morning, it is, yeah, it's warm and humid out there. 73 degrees right now. We are more than 10 degrees above normal. Actually, a little bit warmer than yesterday. Same thing with that number, the dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. It's up to 68 degrees. Not to the point where... You know, it's fogging up the windows as of yet, but uh, it, it's getting there. And yeah, it's kind of, it's a, definitely a, a rude awakening when you walk outside. We've got temperatures today. They're going to be getting into the upper 80s and 90s. And of course, these are very, very dependent upon how many holes we get in the clouds. Yesterday, we had mostly cloudy skies throughout the afternoon with some sunshine mixed in. You get a big hole in the clouds, obviously that's going to be heating things up more. But 88 for a high temperature is still anywhere from 5 to 10 above normal. And then you have to add in some of that humidity. So we're going to have heat index readings, mid upper 90s down along the Rio Grande and 91 here in town. And heat index is going to be something we'll be dealing with for the next couple of days. Oaks on the high side. Mold is also high, although oak did come down from the previous day's reading. And yeah, cloudy, humid this morning. Very, very warm. And then basically just hot and humid later on today with some sunshine mixed in. Also, it's going to be breezy today. It's going to be breezy the next couple of days. And then through the weekend, we'll have same scenario. Morning clouds, some sunshine mixed in in the afternoon. Hot and humid with temperatures right around upper 80s, 90. Then late Sunday and then into Monday, we have the chance for some showers and a couple of thunderstorms. Like I said, this is one of the best chances of rain we've had in a while. Long range computer models have been very consistent with this, which is always encouraging. So we will definitely keep monitoring it. Also, we'll get a break from some of the heat by the first part of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what's going on? Well, we got a different view of that uh, bridge work that's taking place here off US 90. Let's go ahead and get a closer look. Now, according to Texas, uh, this should have wrapped around five this morning. We are now past half uh, half an hour past five, so we are still seeing that work taking place. So I'll call our friends at Transguy to find out if there's any delays, but drivers, we are starting to see people get out on the roadways, and we know US 90 is one of those spots where we expect to see traffic build as the day does roll on. So we'll watch it closely, but let's get that wide look at the map because we aren't spotting slowdowns uh, building just yet, but the morning is still young. Let's take a look at what's happening over here on the east side. Right now, I-10 westbound. If you're traveling in from Seguin, pretty much uh, still green, 30 minutes to the downtown area on I-10. 21 minutes if you're traveling up 87 northbound from Lavernia to downtown San Antonio. And if your destination is here in the Alamo City, and if you're traveling from Floresville, well, 27 minutes right at this hour. So no delays just yet, but it's uh, something that we're going to watch closely, especially here, US 90 at Montgomery. Again, we'll hopefully we'll have some updates and we'll see some progress as the morning does go on. Guys.
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, what began with an officer calling for a driver to stop ends with him calling for help. That officer, who is with Via Transit Police, suffered an injury in a struggle with the driver overnight. This happened in a parking lot downtown near East Crockett and Chestnut Streets. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, how did that traffic stop escalate? Well, from what VIA police say, this started with well, this involved the driver ignoring everything that he was told to do. They say it started with him running a stop sign at this intersection and then trying to run away by driving into the parking lot of that apartment building. Now, it took VIA and San Antonio police to get this driver into custody. They arrested him in the parking lot high up inside the Baldwin Apartments. The VIA officer says he first noticed the driver around 2 o'clock this morning when he ran a stop sign nearby. The officer tried to stop him, but the driver kept going, heading into the parking lot. The police say at some point when they reached the fourth floor level, the two got into a struggle and the officer suffered a broken thumb. A call for backup, meanwhile, had brought a big response from police. And again, they were able to take that suspect, that driver, into custody. He faces a whole list of charges, including assaulting a peace officer. Now, police tell us there was a second person in the car with him, and that person did get away. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Walt Disney World might not be the happiest place on Earth at the moment. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, Florida lawmakers are on track to strip it of a special status that allows it to operate mostly independently. Oh, hi, everybody. Mickey Mouse himself might be feeling less welcome in Florida right now. What this is about is about Disney not recognizing that they are a guest in our state. The state house is expected to pass a bill today to end Disney's operational autonomy around its Orlando area theme parks. Republican Governor Ron DeSantis says he supports the measure, which is already through the Senate. The mouse has ruled Magic Kingdom under the Reedy Creek Improvement Act for 55 years. But its CEO recently criticized Florida lawmakers for prohibiting schools from discussing sexual orientation and gender identity, especially in younger grades. We wouldn't have been looking at special districts if Disney had not behaved the way they did. By doing that, we looked at it and we realized there was a problem. Transgenderism injected into kindergarten classrooms or woke gender ideology injected into second grade classroom. Why is that the hill to die on? Some Florida Democrats say they're worried about economic blowback. The state estimated tourism generated about $100 billion in revenue in 2019 and supported more than one and a half million jobs. Reedy Creek has a budget of over $350 million. They have debt of almost a billion dollars. Orange County, Central Florida residents would have to absorb all of that debt. And it is something that we cannot handle. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. President Joe Biden planning to send additional military aid to help Ukraine fight the Russian invasion. A U.S. official says the president will deliver an address later this morning at the White House detailing his plans to build on the roughly $2.6 billion in military assistance. It now includes heavy artillery and ammunition that Ukrainian forces need. Meanwhile, this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered his forces not to storm the last remaining Ukrainian stronghold in the coastal city of Mariupol, but to block it. The city's capture has both strategic and symbolic importance. Home prices hit an all-time high in March. The median existing home price was over $375, up 15% from a year earlier. Now, according to the National Association of Realtors, this marks more than a decade of year-over-year -year increases, the longest-running streak on record. Mortgage rates have also been on the rise since the beginning of the year. The latest average now at 5% and expected to keep going up. It is a birthday fit for a queen. Queen Elizabeth today celebrating her 96th birthday. The occasion will be marked by a 41 gun royal salute in Hyde Park there in London. However, uh, the biggest festivities will be reserved for her official royal birthday celebrations in June. Like previous monarchs, the queen was able to choose an official birthday in warmer weather for suitable parades. Uh, the queen is said to be bouncing back from a bout of coronavirus. There's hope she can be more visible for public celebrations centered around her official royal birthday celebrations to take place early this summer. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Time now, 538 and 72 degrees for now. Still ahead, how Halo Top ice cream is changing its recipe for the better and adding a new special flavor.
signing day usually reserved for college sports, but we're going to show you a special event that highlighted students furthering their education. Outside with live cam on your early Thursday morning, one of our favorite shots of downtown, Frost on the left, Alamo Dome on the right. You're watching GMSA. Thursday morning time check 541. Welcome back to KSAT 12. It is an event that came with cheers as loud as a sporting event, but instead those in the audience were cheering on their peers, furthering their education. KSAT photojournalist Robert Samaron takes inside the idea signing day where more than a thousand students got accepted into colleges. <laughs> Today is a college signing day celebration. They're anxiously waiting to show off which school they'll be matriculating this fall. It's a big event because of how much work went into getting into these schools that we're about to announce. The whole idea community start, comes together and celebrates where the kids are going to college. It's been a different experience from other schools. Focusing everyone towards college and, and we know what we're trying to accomplish. We've got high standards for each other. Kind of a time for us to actually enjoy the fact that we made it and that we're here. I definitely feel all of the energy feeding into me. It's really nice to see that I can just keep pushing myself and see my potential. Never, never wait. I would say it starts from the very start that you step into that school. It just kind of perpetuates that mentality of, hey, we're all going to college. That's the mindset that they get you into. I'm going to do the best I can with what I have kind of mindset. I think it's like really great opportunity to explore like, and see and test like, what I want to do. It's just a culture. And once you can build that, I think it's, it, starts to, it starts to work. You're going to encounter multi multiple problems and challenges throughout not only high school but also college and that's what they're essentially preparing you for. I can say I'm proud of uh, all the effort that I've put into school. Take control and take responsibility of what your education is and what your future will be. And they believe they're going to uh, be successful and, and that's 90% of the battle for any of them. I worked on it until the very end of my deadline. <laughs> And I was able to get in. And now I will be attending there. No, no doubts whatsoever. Going to Penn. What yeah. an event. Impressive. Congrats to all the students. And a great job by photojournalist Robert Samaron. Fantastic. I'm getting ready to work with him on a story very soon. Awesome. I'm excited. Exciting. 544, about 72 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to visit the San Antonio Humane Society and a fuzzy pet that needs a new home. Kim is here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Good Look morning. At this little girl. This little girl is Candy. Um, she was brought into us a few weeks ago, just owner surrender. Mm -hmm. uh, she is guardian angeled. So what that is, is her adoption fee is covered through our guardian angel program. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Um, and so she is learning how to sit. She's learning how to stay and walking on a leash. So just a Sweet. little over a year old. Little terrier mix. And, yeah. you know, nice thing is not going to get any bigger than this. No, this perfect, is about the size. Perfect size. Uh, perfect, you know, little lap dog. Great little walking companion. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. You can get outside and, and uh, the kids. Kids can take her for a walk, so absolutely. Go. Short coat, easy to take care of. That's okay. the best. <laughs> you come bearing t-shirts. I do, I come bearing t-shirts. So we have our annual uh, Camp Humane happening this summer, mm -hmm. and you can sign up on our website. So if your kiddo wants to learn uh, what it's like to be a vet or behind the scenes or a trainer, we have all those opportunities. So you can do enrichment activities where you're making things for our sweet little pups and kittens. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they get to go behind the scenes and see what the they do. do and everything. Yes, do. yeah, they'll get to go behind the scenes, see what the vets are doing, um, learn how to train pups, uh, like sit, mm -hmm. stay, so all of that good stuff. And you can sign up on our website um, and take advantage of it. So, and, I'm, yep. And the medical facility there, I've seen it firsthand, is, is fascinating, great facility they have there. And you're gonna learn a lot. The vets yes. are very, very nice. Yep, too, so. absolutely, okay, absolutely. Okay, well, if you'd like more information on that or Little Candy, sahumane.org, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, give them a call, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. 
Some produce being sold at Walmart is being recalled due to contamination concerns. The FDA says World Variety Produce is recalling a case uh, lot, a case lot rather, of organic zucchini. The vegetables have potentially been contaminated with salmonella. The two count pack of zucchini sold under the brand Organic Market Side at Walmart in 18 states, including Texas. The FDA says no illnesses have been reported. And people who like Halo Top ice cream no longer need to put the treat in the microwave. Cartons are the product used to instruct people to let the ice cream thaw for a few minutes before eating. So now officials at Halo Top say they are now using ultra filtered milk. And that means the ice cream should be ready to eat when scooped out of the carton. In addition to this new recipe, Halo Top is also celebrating its 10th anniversary with a new flavor, chocolate cake batter. Ooh. That sounds pretty good. Even it. 10 till 6 in the morning when you haven't really had breakfast <laughs> of yet. Of course, it sounds wonderful right now. <laughs> Let's hope the roads are wonderful as well. I'm checking with Stephen Cabasas. You, you can have a scoop of ice cream and a, a nice hot cup of coffee to go with it. Oh, I'm a big fan of the cookie dough as well as all their flavors, strawberry, vanilla, you name it. Uh, well, let's get a look at our roadways here in town. 410 at Gulebna Road. You can put your spoon of ice cream down for just a moment. Let's talk about what we are seeing out here. Lots of quiet spots. However, as I mentioned, we do have some bridge work that's been, uh, it seems like they're experiencing some delays out there. So we want our friends out toward US 90 far west Bear County, San Antonio. And if you're driving in from Castroville to be prepared, because although we're not seeing anything, looks like a crash may have popped up there off the uh, northeast side near 604. We'll find out what's going on there. This bridge work, if you're just waking up with us, is taking place off US 90. It should be wrapping tomorrow. Now, Texas has that listed as wrapping around five in the morning, but we are still seeing that work continue out there. Keep in mind, there is that full closure of the main lanes in both directions right there at Montgomery. Montgomery Road. But thankfully, as we get that look at the map here off US 90, we're not spotting a slowdown just yet. If you're traveling in those eastbound lanes, uh, 18 minute drive time. If you are trying to head to the I 35, same goes if you are trying to get to 35 from 90. So we are going to watch this area closely for our friends out there, but we want you to watch for those crews who are working to improve the roadways. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Hey, yeah. think of ice cream. What is it? Basically cream and sugar. Mm -hmm. Little mm -hmm. flavoring. OK, so you put milk on cereal. Oh, and yeah. the cereal might have a little bit of sugar in it. So why not? Right. There it's you essentially go. the same thing, or just in a different form. Extra ice cream, for <laughs> right. that matter. <laughs> now all the kids are going, Ma, they said that we could eat ice cream this <laughs> morning. So. We're sorry, parents. We're so sorry. We're enabling in a bad way. Oh, yeah. My kids are out of the house now. So, no, I'm kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> Listen to your parents. Of course. So, okay, I'm hoping I'm going to save myself on this one. Uh, do, why do you... When there, there's a little bit of uh, some clouds going across the sun like that, it always looks like, you know, some of the movies from Africa or something like that, those great sunset shots yeah. there. But, yeah, we did have, obviously, a lot of clouds around yesterday. Some sun was peeking on through, and that's going to be the situation again today. Lots of clouds uh, out there right now. We're not seeing any of the, uh, the planets or stars like we usually see at this time of the morning. And the dew point temperatures, the measure moisture in the atmosphere, which are sky high right now, upper 60s, 70s. That's why you're greeted by humidity when you walk out outside will drop down somewhat in the afternoon. This is kind of a usual situation that happens when the uh, dew points tend to trim off a little bit, but still with temperatures in the upper 80s today and a dew point of 62, that being the threshold line right there of 60, we'll have a heat index, just a few degrees, not anything off the charts, just a few degrees above the actual air temperature, so it'll feel like roughly the low 90s. And then in the morning tomorrow, dew points are going to be coming back up, and we'll go through that kind of somewhat roller coaster trend over the next couple of mornings. This morning, with the cloud cover out there, with the higher humidity, it doesn't allow temperatures to drop down that much. We may fluctuate a couple of degrees, getting down into the low 70s before it's all said and done. And then we start to see more sunshine coming out by later on this morning get up to 80 today at noon. Wind's going to start to pick up again on the breezy side, and then we top off at 88 degrees, leaning more toward more clouds than sunshine. But we will still have uh, enough sunshine to get us up into the upper 80s, and that's going to be the case the next few mornings and low or next few days. Mornings are going to be right around 70. Then the changes come about by Monday, only 78 degrees for a high temperature, and that's with a front that's going to be moving through here. And that's the day we have the chance for some uh, showers and some thunderstorms around here. And it's still looking encouraging for those rain chances on Monday. 80 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 88 with the humidity. And like I said, it's also going to be breezy wind out of the southeast 10 to 20 miles per hour gusts at times. And then with that extra humidity, 
It'll feel like the low 90s, so nothing off the charts as far as the uh, the heat index is concerned. Next few mornings, right around 70. Next few afternoons, right around the upper 80s, breezy and some sunshine mixed in with the clouds. Then on Sunday, we will have the chance for some rain later on in the evening, overnight into Monday. Right now, it is looking very encouraging. As I keep saying, long range models have been really consistent over the past couple of days, and that's always a good sign. So, and uh, we never, you know, guarantee that anything's going to happen. Mother Nature's hey. a finicky. You know, when we're still uh, what four days out, sure, or almost five days out from this, but. Again, the consistency up to this point is always a good sign. That's encouraging. It'll be good after all the heat on yeah. the weekend. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 554, about 72 degrees. Go ahead and look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3383, three, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 1221, two, Fireball 1. Cash 5 numbers 5620, 21, 25, Lotto Texas 5, 13, 15, 34, 38, 48, and Powerball. Nobody matched all six numbers last night. The jackpot jumps to $400 million for Saturday night's drawing. The numbers 20, 30, 45, 55, 56, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Welcome back. Coming up in the next half hour or hour rather of GMSA, just in time for Earth Day tomorrow, a major retailer offering a new service to help you declutter your home of old devices. And speaking of Earth Day, we're sharing with you some steps you can use every day that can help safeguard our planet that is still to come. But first, we have the latest on a shooting death of a woman. We are live with details on that. And Transguide right now, we've been watching construction this morning in parts of town. You're looking live at 410 and Culebra. We'll be right back. Miscommunication being blamed for striking fear at the U.S. Capitol after an emergency evacuation issued all over a demonstration at a baseball game. That story still ahead. And humidity. That's what greeted me this morning when I stepped outside. Very humid out there. We're at 72 degrees. We'll be checking in with Mike about those rain chances after the weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you, Rise and Shine. It is Thursday. It is April 21st. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you've had a great week so far. And we are getting very excited about the possibility of rain later on. That's right. Significant rainfall. Mike, we're trying real hard not to oversell this for you, but uh, we're excited. For yeah, sure. we, we always talk about that, that you don't want to yeah, get too excited too soon about it because mm -hmm. things can change still four or five days out. But as I've been saying this morning, the consistency with the long range computer models going back the past couple of days, still looking at this rain event coming in here starting late Sunday and Monday. So, yeah, don't pop the champagne yet. But um, <laughs> and the nice thing is, too, it is one of the the best chances of rain and some widespread rain that we've had around here in a long time. So more on that coming up in just a moment. It is humid, as Stephanie was saying. Um, I don't know if it's as I described it sometime as the uh, wet towel in the face kind of humidity, but it's pushing at that 73 degrees been holding steady for the past few hours. 71 Bolverde, Helotus, Rio Medina, as well as Comfort and the cool spot, if you will, Lost Maples at 67 degrees. But all of these numbers are give or take 10 degrees above their respective normals. And then you've got these numbers. Actually, the dew point went up a degree. That's not good news around here. So a little bit more humidity came in just in the past hour. And dew points in the mid upper 60s, low 70s, which means, yeah, plenty of humidity. We get a slight little decrease in the humidity in the afternoon, but still enough that you're going to be noticing it. Oak did drop somewhat from the previous day's reading. Still on the high side. Same thing with mold. Pine and pecan are both low. We may drop another couple of degrees this morning, but pretty much temperatures are going to be steady with all this humidity. The wind picks up later on this morning out of the southeast, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Some sunshine starts to squeeze through the clouds, 80 at noon, and then we will be topping off later on today up to 88 degrees. So on average, 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Normal average temperature, high temperature nowadays, is in the low 80s. So definitely on the hot side, it's going to remain this situation through the next couple of days. Same scenario each and every day. Then and those rain chances come in here by late in the weekend. We'll talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos. 
How would you rate the morning so far? I'd give it uh, probably five cups of coffee if you want to, you know, so that's some good news. <laughs> so we haven't spotted big issues just yet, but one of the issues that we are tracking right now is that bridge work US 90 at Montgomery. Now I do want to take a moment to take a look at what's going on there. It does look like crews uh, from Texas are doing some sort of paving work. We know that they are working on some bridge construction. However, it is taking them a little while. We did talk to our friends over at trans guide. So this has been ongoing since over night. According to TechStop, this started at 9 in the evening. Should be should have wrapped around 5 this morning, but again, we are seeing some sort of delays in that area. Thankfully, we are not seeing delays when it comes to traffic off US 90, especially if you are traveling in the east or westbound lane. So that's some good news for anyone that may have to head in that direction in the next few moments. And if your travels take you right here to the Alamo City from any of these communities, well, you're in luck. I-10 eastbound traveling in from Bernie, 24 minutes to downtown SA, 28 minutes to 81 southbound from Mulverde, the usual slowdown, so just be prepared for that. And 26 minutes on I-35 southbound and New Braunfels. So no worries there, but this is an area that we are going to continue to watch closely as the morning does go on. Hopefully we will see this wrap before morning rush does get here. But as a quick reminder, make sure to have those phones handy coming up at 615. We're going to have an update on some of the closures that could be impacting your morning drive. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New details this morning in a story we first brought to you yesterday right here on GMSA. We're hearing from a daughter who lost her mom during a deadly shooting on our city's west side. Jonathan Koto following the latest developments live. Good morning, Jonathan. Mark, a terrifying situation. Indeed, something no one wants to go through. 49-year-old Christina Carrion shot through the door of her apartment before she could even see who was there. San Antonio police are telling us the suspect shot at least three bullets through the door before taking off. As of right now, the search continues for the suspect and there are no details as who they are looking for. Carrion's daughter and boyfriend were inside at the time of the shooting. Her daughter, who wished to stay anonymous, says that she is scared and has lots of questions. Why? Why did this happen? Why did you shoot our door? Why here? Why just our door? Carrion's daughter says she felt the bullets blow through the door, flying right past her, the gunfire missing her and hitting her mother, who was sleeping in another room. Investigators left with a lot of questions in this case. It's still unclear if this was a random act of violence or a targeted attack. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Top stories this morning. Today is day three of testimony in the Jonathan Johnson Capital murder trial. Over the first two days, we've heard testimony from witnesses, detectives, and forensic scientists. Court reporter Eric Hernandez gives us a wrap up of what happened and what we can expect the rest of the week. The first two days of testimony has revealed possible motive in this case, as well as how the investigation led to the arrest of the defendant, Jonathan Johnson. This deadly shooting happened at the Robin's Nest Apartments off Hotwells Boulevard back in 2019. The state's main witness, Angelica Rangel, was shot at during that incident but survived. She told jury that she believed she was the target of the shooting after getting a threat from her friend who she was having an argument with over added phone lines to her phone account without her permission. Later, detectives said that during questioning of Angelica, she claimed a man named Chris was the shooter, but through a photo lineup, identified Johnson as the shooter, who she said was introduced to her as Chris. Crime scene investigators collected more than a dozen shell casings from the scene, and a firearms examiner was able to determine that while there was no firearm recovered, all the casings came from the same 9mm semi-automatic pistol. As for what we can expect today, the state will be putting its last witness on the stand. That is the lead detective in this case, and we'll have more on that testimony later this afternoon. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Well, an 18-year-old is in custody, accused of running guns for gangs. Damian Mermea now under arrest after a multi-agency operation. BCSO, the Texas Anti-Gang Unit, other law enforcement executed a search warrant on Gloria Street last week. That's near Zarzamora and Northwest 36th Street. And that's where they say they found a gun in almost every room, along with marijuana, ammunition, and lots of cash. 
Yesterday marked four months since Lena Kill disappeared from a playground at her apartment complex near the medical center. San Antonio police, divers, and volunteer search crews have all looked for her. Anyone with information that leads to police finding her can get a $250,000 reward. If you have any information, you are asked to call the San Antonio Police Department's Missing Persons Unit. That number is 210-207-7660. Happening today, Governor Abbott set to be in San Antonio for a roundtable discussion on the agenda, law enforcement issues and safety. Texas still reeling from border policy changes and those added truck inspections that Abbott implemented that cost Texans money and put a strain on the supply chain. It's moved that the governor has faced backlash for. It was just last week, state troopers were told to stop every commercial truck and check things like tire pressure, headlamps, and engines. Governor Abbott says he ended those extra inspections after working at a deal with governors in Mexico. Next half hour, GMSA, we break down Abbott's visit to San Antonio later today. And now to the chaos at the U.S. Capitol last night. The entire Capitol complex was quickly evacuated. Police issued an urgent warning about an approaching plane, saying it posed a probable threat. Well, it turns out it was all a big misunderstanding. ABC's Dion Lim has the latest. This morning, lawmakers demanding answers after a false alarm triggered a full evacuation of the U.S. Capitol. Yes, sir, we've got a parachute jump at the uh, National Stadium, and I'd uh, like to proceed the point when able. The confusion caused by a stunt plane scheduled to fly over the Washington Nationals baseball game in honor of Military Appreciation Night. But before the plane could get to the ballpark, the chaos began. I think it was a miscommunication. You should not be on me. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to hand you off to uh, Crant and figure out what exactly you're supposed to be doing, because you're a well above my altitude and uh, be this helicopter frequency. The Capitol Police mistook the plane for an unauthorized aircraft. Officers immediately issued an alert warning government workers to evacuate now, saying they were tracking an aircraft that poses a probable threat to the Capitol complex. It took nearly half an hour for police and aviation officials to clear up the confusion. And as people filed back into the Capitol, the stunt went on as planned. But now lawmakers are blaming the FAA for the chaos. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi calling the confusion inexcusable, writing in a statement overnight, the unnecessary panic caused by this apparent negligence was particularly harmful for members, staff and institutional workers still grappling with the trauma of the attack on their workplace on January 6th. Pelosi is demanding accountability for what she calls an outrageous and frightening mistake. The FAA says it will conduct a thorough review. Dion Lim, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, the San Antonio Symphony has been silent without performing a single concert in about six months. Musicians went on strike following the board's plan to reduce staff, cut pay, and cut health benefits. Despite ongoing negotiations, the symphony board and musicians have not yet reached a deal. Many scheduled concerts for the season have been canceled. The music director, Sebastian Lang Lessing, was fired after the board discovered he would be performing in a non-official symphony concert put on by the musicians of the San Antonio symphony and he feels it's retribution for his outspoken support for the musicians. This is semantics in a contract that is used as a vindictive effort against actually the initiative of the musicians and that's you know my situation I'm just collateral damage in something that has been going on for six months. It seems very clear to us that their interest is not really in preserving a fully professional orchestra in San Antonio. Meanwhile, the CEO of the symphony says they are focused on coming to an agreement to save the remaining of the season. The musicians of the San Antonio Symphony will perform tonight and tomorrow at the First Baptist Church of San Antonio at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are sold online. A free family concert will take place Saturday at 10 a.m. Right now, 611, about 72 degrees. A major electronics retailer wants to help you get rid of the clutter in your house. Straight ahead, the new service Best Buy is now offering. Cowboys fans hear what Stephen Jones has to say about uh, letting Amari Cooper go. That's coming up in sports. And taking a look outside with live cam. When you open that door this morning, do not be surprised about that humidity. It will hit you. We're at 72 degrees and we'll be right back. 
football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Welcome back. 615 Cowboys VP Stephen Jones raised a few eyebrows after what he had to say about the Cowboys offseason moves that have come into question by some fans. More specifically, the team's decision to move on from Amari Cooper and instead take their chances on CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup for the future at wide receiver. It's even though Gallup will not be able to start the regular season in September, he's still recovering from surgery to repair a torn ligament. Stephen Jones answered the concerns on Dallas radio station The Fan when questioned about some of these off-season decisions. I don't think you ever win the Super Bowl in the off-season. Uh, I think it's a full body of work, what you put together over time, and uh, I certainly appreciate that. I mean, uh, the biggest thing of all is, uh, you know, is it's been a long time since uh, we have won a championship, and no one appreciates that more than myself, than Jerry. Uh, than the people in this organization that we, you know, you, you've got to get over the hump. At the same time, we didn't last year with that uh, same group of players. And, you know, sometimes uh, you let a player move on and it allows other players to step up uh, in even a bigger role. And uh, whether that's a C.D. Lamb or a Michael Gallup, uh, I know, uh, you know, Amari was a great player for us. Uh, but this, uh, you know, might allow uh, uh, certainly – uh, CD and, and, and Michael to step up. Now to a soccer stunner. MLS's Austin FC visiting San Antonio FC. Third round of the Hunt U.S. Open last night. SAFC, SAFC down 1-0 in the 83rd minute. Justin Dillon gathers the pass, regains his balance, and fires it into the box. Elliot Collier pokes it past the keeper for the equalizer. They would go to extra time where SAFC would add another goal in the 96th minute. So it's a big upset win for San Antonio. Final score, 2-1. to one. Yeah, congrats, San Antonio. Right? And let's time. it's time to check in with Steven Cavazos. I didn't see any problems when I looked at the trans guy cameras at last look. You know what they used to call me in soccer? <gasps> what? Bambi. Why? you were fast. Maybe I run like a deer. I don't know. But. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. You're but, making those points. <laughs> well, no, not at all. But, you know, a shout out to those who can't. Let's get a look <laughs> out around town. Let's drive. 1604 at Shane Field. A little bit pixelated there, but we're not really seeing a lot of activity out there. So if you are an early bird commuter, have to head out at this hour, you're in luck. You'll basically have some green lanes to enjoy. But be on the lookout because I-35 South at 37, we do have a stalled vehicle there. And it looks like as we drive down over here at 30, 35 southbound at Somerset Road, we have another stall. So make sure to watch out and check your vehicles when you before you get out on the roadways. As we mentioned, there's still some bridge work that's continuing out here toward US 90. Hopefully that'll be wrapping up pretty soon. Want to bring it right here again, just as a quick reminder that should be finishing tomorrow according to tech stop, but that will be overnight 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. You can expect a full closure of both lanes in uh, pardon me, main lanes in both directions at Montgomery Road, and it is that time. Go ahead and bring out your phones. Uh, we want to leave this up for a few seconds. I know Mark had actually tested this out about two seconds, right, Mark? Yep. Did the same thing for me right now. It takes about two seconds. Open your camera app, scan that QR code that will take you directly to the case at traffic page that does have the latest information on closures in your area. And of course, anything that could be impacting your morning drive time. And I just did it right now. Again, two seconds, mm -hmm. probably even less uh, if you're just right on it. I'm not yeah, even the fastest less. fun in the West. Yeah, yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. Let's got do it, it as well. There you go. All right, <laughs> nice stuff, guys. Yeah. Very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to need your help uh -oh. and get ready to send to probably Mr. Austin. Okay. We've got a plant to identify. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because so, none of us. Uh, no green thumbs in this studio. <laughs> no, but of course, you know, some of our viewers just know it instantaneously. So that's going to come up in just about two seconds here. Okay. All right. It is, you need air conditioning this morning. It is definitely warm and humid out there. We'll drop down another degree or two down to 70 when it's all said and done. Cloudy, humid, southeasterly winds going to start to pick up throughout the afternoon and even later on this morning. We'll start to see some sunshine squeezing through the clouds later on this morning. Then we top off at 88 degrees. So we are going to be six, seven degrees above normal. All right, here it is. It is absolutely beautiful. The color, I love that. I mean, it's, man, how, how, what a gorgeous color there. But what is that? That's not a plumeria, right? No. I, you're asking me. I mean, oh, listen, why. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> are you a, a 
green thumb person? No, not at all. You should okay. see my dead plants. It's a um, blooming Gewurztraminer, so. Oh, um, okay. A what? Standard, so. I it's a sweet German wine. But the name is really cool, so yes, it, it is. apply to anything that sounds Mike's good. Mike's cheating uh, over there. Anyway, uh, yeah, for all of our, our plant folks out there, let us know what that is. See if we can get the answer just before I'm done with the, uh, the weather here. Lots of clouds hanging out this morning, and uh, yeah, the humidity is definitely going to be greeting you as you step out the front door. Yesterday, we did hit 84 degrees, still a few notches above normal, and and got some upper 80s, low 90s off to the west. And then today, going to be a different situation. Add uh, anywhere four to five degrees to that for a high temperature. Like I said, this morning, we're going to be right around the low 70s. Plenty of clouds. And the wind is going to start to pick up somewhat later on this morning. And then by late morning, we start to see, again, the sun squeeze through the clouds. 80 at noon, wind out of the south to southeast at uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 miles per hour. Gusts about 25, not overly windy, but just enough of a breeze out there. And we'll have that mixture of sunshine and clouds. I think we lean more toward the cloudier side, kind of like yesterday, 88 for a high temperature. And then we'll have a bit more in the way of just partly cloudy skies later on tonight. All right, going on into the future, it's going to be that 24 hour uh, kind of regular uh, rotation, if you will, with the clouds. More clouds in the morning, some sunshine in the afternoon, more humidity in the mornings, and then some sunshine in the afternoon. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Saturday. Saturday morning, a couple of little uh, sprinkly showers here, and then more uh, in the way of some sunshine later on in the day on Saturday. Sunday, again, we'll start off same scenario. Then as the afternoon rolls on, we start to see this. Actually, it's a cool front that's going to be moving on through here. That's going to help to touch off some showers and even a couple of thunderstorms, especially overnight into the wee hours of Monday morning and throughout the morning drive and throughout the day. We will have some uh, showers around here. This computer model is is very uh, encouraging because it's been really consistent over the past couple of days as far as the uh, long range and this would continue on at least the skate. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to be raining everywhere, but we will have some of those showers around and then perhaps sticking around into early Tuesday morning. Then we will start to clear on out after that. So like I said, don't pop the champagne yet, but it is encouraging as far as the rain chances coming in here on Monday. 80 at noon, most of the cloudy skies, high temperature up to 88. Normal average high temperature is 81, so definitely on the hot side of things. And with the humidity, it'll feel like 90 91 and then that's going to be going to be the same situation the next couple of days lows around 70 high temperatures upper 80s close to 90 that chance of rain late Sunday and yeah that front's actually going to knock temperatures down to below normal readings temporarily actually kind of coolish on Tuesday morning and a uh, encouraging chance of rain Monday. Okay, Mike, and we don't have an answer on the flower, but we're working on it right now. It is 623, about 72 degrees. And coming up next, Instagram wants you to post original content instead of reposting things from TikTok, what the platform is offering as an incentive. I started screening for colon cancer because of my late husband, Jay. I wish he could have seen our daughter, Ellie, get married on the best day of her life. But colon cancer took him from us, like it's taken so many others. That's why I've made it my mission to talk about getting screened and ask people to share their reasons why. I screen for my growing family. Being with them means everything to me. I screen for my girls. They're always surprising me. I screen for my son. I'm his biggest fan. If you're 45 or older and at average risk, it's time to screen. Today, there are more screening options than ever before, including Cologuard. Cologuard is non-invasive and finds 92% of colon cancers, even in early stages. It's not for those at high risk. False positive and negative results may occur. Ask your provider if Cologuard is right for you. Everyone has a reason to screen for colon cancer. If you're 45 or older, get started at missiontoscreen.com. In today's Tech Bytes, Instagram wants you to leave your TikToks on TikToks instead of reposting them to Reels. The platform changing its ranking algorithm to favor original content, so creators will now get more credit for their original videos and photos, helping them to build audiences. And just in time for tomorrow's Earth Day, Best Buy has launched a service to haul away your old devices. A crew will now come to your home remove and recycle two large items like a refrigerator or range for $199. The same fee covers an unlimited number of smaller items. Hmm. Okay, have to do on the math on that one. Right now, 626, about 72 degrees. 
And coming up, we now know the name of a man killed during an early morning accident yesterday. The story is still to come. The battle over the mask mandate continues. The CDC wants the Department of Justice to step in. The latest is next. Parking lot. Good morning. I'm Katrina Weber. A police officer suffered minor injuries in a struggle with a man who they say faces a painful future. I'll tell you more about it. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. Governor Greg Abbott set to be in San Antonio. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you what you can expect out of that visit. The mask mandate that was just lifted is now being challenged in court. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the reasons for the appeal. And we can't buy a drop of rain, although we've had drizzle around off and on for days. Mike's forecast includes some of the best rain chances we have seen in quite some time. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday. All of us, it is April 21st. Yes, we did. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, that humidity. Really something this morning, and even more so than yesterday. It seems like it. Mike says this is our typical late spring, early summer pattern here in South Texas. Yeah, all that humidity keeps getting pumped on in here. And you said you saw a little bit of mist on the mm -hmm. windshield. We didn't. No, we morning. did not. And uh, Stephen did. So, yeah, it just all depends on where you are, whether you see any of that, that little mist around this morning. Uh, so the roads could be on the damp side. Lots of clouds. And, yeah, like uh, we were talking about, the humidity temperatures are actually up a couple of degrees compared to yesterday. 73 here in town, Port SA, 71 Helotus, Ball Verde, and Bernie Stage. Oh, a very cool 68 degrees, if you will. But all of these numbers are 10 degrees on average above their respective normals. And then you've got these numbers out there, the dew points, the measure moisture in the atmosphere. This is how you figure out relative humidity. When it gets above 60, that's when you definitely start to feel the humidity. So we're mid upper 60s, low 70s around here. It's really darn humid. We will get a bit of a break in the afternoon where the dew points tend to drop down somewhat. We'll still have a, a humid afternoon though. And Oak and Mulder both on the high side. The updated count is going to be coming out in half an hour, 45 minutes or so. And throughout the rest of the morning, we are going to be seeing uh, temperatures that are going to be getting up into the upper 80s, and that's going to be the case for the next couple of days. Morning clouds, some afternoon sunshine mixed in. It's going to be breezy today as well as the next few days, and then we'll talk more about those rain chances coming in here for the first part of next week. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's cooking? Well, we still have that bridge work taking place, Mike, right here, US 90 at Montgomery. Now, according to TxDOT, this should have wrapped around 5, but uh, we are seeing it now more than an hour and a half later. Crews are still out there. So as a quick reminder, this is taking place right there at Montgomery Road. Uh, the main lanes are experiencing that closure, but uh, this is in both directions. Thankfully, we're not seeing this cause any other issues, but we want our folks over there that are driving through this area to watch for some of the textile crews that are. You can see them right there along that trans guide camera. Give them plenty of room to get that work done. We also want you to give first responders plenty of room because we do have our first crash that's been reported right here off of Loop 410 eastbound right near Roosevelt Avenue, according to Tech Stop. Now, we're not seeing a slowdown just yet, but it's an area that we want people to drive carefully through. Thankfully, uh, it does look like some we are seeing some progress over here. I was checking one of the cameras at Transguide, not spotting a stall anymore off I-35 southbound at 37. But as another reminder, check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. No need to rush out the door if you are traveling in from any of these communities to the Alamo City. We are seeing a pretty much green across the board situation. But again, for our friends up in Bulverde, traveling on those southbound lanes from 281, one, you will see a 28 minute drive time. So just pack that patience this morning. We are going to continue to watch the roads closely and give you those updates as the morning does roll on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. A man initially accused of running a stop sign now is even in bigger trouble. He is accused of putting up a fight and assaulting a police officer. This happened in a parking lot of a downtown apartment building. Katrina Weber is live near the intersection of East Crockett and Chestnut with that story. Katrina, what do we know about the officer's injuries? Well, the police tell us the officer suffered what may be a broken thumb. He went to a hospital to get checked out. Now, this is the result of something that happened high up in the parking lot of that high rise. A call for backup from that officer around two this morning brought quite a response of help from San Antonio police. With that teamwork, they took the driver into custody. Via police say the man had run a stop sign nearby. They say when their officer tried to stop him, he drove away, heading up to the fourth floor level of the Baldwin's parking lot. 
Police say that's where the man and the officer got into a physical struggle. And when it was over again, the officer had a possible broken thumb and the driver had a new set of handcuffs. He faces multiple charges, including driving while intoxicated and assaulting a peace officer. And police tell us they're still looking for a second person who was in the car with him and ran away. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Also new this morning, the medical examiner's office has released the name of a 21-year-old man killed yesterday over on the east side. Police say David Garza died after he crashed on Pecan Valley Drive. They believe speed played a role in the crash. San Antonio police believe he may have taken a corner too fast, then hit a utility pole and died there at the scene. The victim in another deadly crash yesterday has also been identified. 27-year-old Angel Reyes died during a crash on Callahan near Ingram Road and Loop 410. He died at the scene. San Antonio police say Garza hydroplaned, possibly on the wet roads, hit a pole and went off the road before crashing. Happening today, Governor Greg Abbott will be in San Antonio for a roundtable discussion. Jonathan Goto joins us live with the details. And Jonathan, what can we expect from that meeting? Stephanie, let me tell you, there is a lot on the agenda. On the minds of many Texans right now, law enforcement issues and safety. You see, Texas is still dealing with uh, border policy changes Governor Abbott implemented, including truck inspections. And critics say that move has cost Texans a lot of money and has put a strain on the supply chain. Last week, DPS troopers were instructed to stop every commercial truck and check for things like tire pressure, engines, and headlamps. Now, Abbott says he ended those extra inspections after working out a deal with governors in Mexico. DPS troopers are scheduled to be a part of today's roundtable discussion. It will start at 3.30 at the main office for the Deputy Sheriff's Association of Bear County. And of course, this is a story we're going to continue to follow throughout the day. You can keep up with the latest on our later newscast and on KSAT.com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. The battle over the federal mask mandate continues. The CDC asking the Department of Justice to appeal the federal judge's ruling in Florida that overturned the federal travel mask mandate on airplanes and public transportation. ABC's Aika Jachi is in Washington with more. This morning, the Justice Department officially filing an appeal of a Florida judge's ruling that overturned the nation's travel mask mandate. It comes at the official request from the CDC. In a statement, the agency says an order requiring masking in the indoor transportation corridor remains necessary for the public's health. The department is also taking into account precedent, not letting a judge decide public health policy. For current and future public health crises, uh, we want to preserve that, that uh, authority for the CDC to have in the future. I think it's really important that they actually appeal that, uh, that ruling because I think it is important that we are able to switch back to putting masks again if there's another big variant. Since the mandate reversal, a chorus of public health experts speaking out, denouncing the decision. This change in policy sets a really challenging precedent. A single judge overturning a mandate driven by public health professional means that we're unnecessarily putting many people at risk. It comes as COVID cases are on the rise. According to Health and Human Services, new infection rates have grown by nearly 23% in the last week. 36 states and territories have seen increases of about 10% or more in that same time. Hospital admissions are up too. And in Milwaukee, school officials there have reinstated the district's mask mandate just a day after it shifted to a mask optional policy, citing a significant transmission of the virus within city limits. For now, the masking rules on public transportation remain inconsistent. No masks needed on flights, but you may need to put one on inside the airport, depending upon which city you land in. But I'm here in Philadelphia. There is an indoor mask mandate, yet I'm seeing so many people without masks, so it's really quite confusing. The CDC's concern goes beyond this mandate, which was set to expire on May 3rd. They want to have the authority to put masks back on in the future just in case of another surge. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Just about 640, 72 degrees. And are you looking for ways to help save the planet this Earth Day? Just ahead, some little daily habits that can make a big difference. Exactly 643. Welcome back. Tomorrow is Earth Day and over a billion people take part in Earth Day activities every year. However, there are steps you can incorporate in your everyday routine that can contribute to safeguarding our planet. RJ Marcus reports. Scientists have found more carbon dioxide in our atmosphere than ever before. 
Two-thirds of extreme weather events in the last 20 years were influenced by humans, and the Living Planet reports wildlife populations have dropped by 60% in just 40 years. But what can we do to stop it? I do recycle. I think we should not recycle, we should try to produce less trash. I think we should kill the problem and not make a solution and create a problem. Did you know that every minute in the shower, you're using two gallons of water? I lather up and rinse off and get out. But if you shorten your shower by a single minute, you can save 60 gallons of water per month. According to the EPA, passenger vehicles account for more than half of transportation-related greenhouse gas emissions produced. If walking or biking to work is not an option, try planting a tree. Experts say planting a tree won't completely offset the carbon emissions humans produce, but it can certainly set roots to getting cleaner air. And have you heard of plogging? Become one with the trash. It's the term used for picking up litter while jogging. Not only will you help keep the environment clean, but you can also get fit while doing so. Meat production is another major contributor of greenhouse gases. If you were to switch to one vegetarian meal just one day a week, you would save 133 gallons of water per meal. If everyone in the world participated in Meatless Mondays, that's equal to taking 240 million cars off the road every year. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Just about 6.45. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, things look like they're moving from these trans guide cameras, Mark, Steph, but let's get a look around town and see what we can expect for this commute right now. 35 and 37. Traffic is moving through there without any problems. Same goes for US 98 couples, although it does look a little bit busier now that the morning is really getting going. But be on the lookout because we do have a crash that was reported by TxDOT at Loop 410 eastbound over here near Roosevelt Avenue. It's not causing any issues for drivers, but we do want people to be prepared for a possible slowdown if first responders are still out there. So give them plenty of room. Quick reminder, I forgot to get this off of our map, but I am still seeing some a little bit of flashing lights out there of 35 south and at 37 due to a stalled vehicle. Looks like it could be clearing out, but just make sure to give them plenty of room out there. And as a quick reminder, we do want to tell you that there's still that bridge work that's taking place off US 90 at Montgomery. Hopefully that will be wrapping up pretty soon, but so far the morning has been off to an easy start, but we'll see how things go, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Awesome. All right, after some extensive yes. research, no. Mr. Austin, some of our viewers figured out what's the $5 name to it? Tiboshina Irviana or the mm. Princess Flower. Correct. Wow. Yeah, like it's that. really pretty. Uh, it's thanks gorgeous. to our viewers. Several yeah. viewers uh, recommended the, the fancy name. We had to go find the more common name. <laughs> I like Princess. Princess. That's, how you, that's, that's how you impress your friends with the, the, the fancy right? name. But thank you very much. I don't even know if I said it right. Let's assume not. Let's, let's assume so. Okay. Uh, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning, and of course the humidity is quite high, and that's going to remain the case all day long. Yeah, we do see, a, as usual, the bit of a reprieve by the afternoon where dew points drop slightly, but then they come back up tomorrow, so we go through that 24-hour cycle. A lot of clouds around here. We're in the low 70s right now, and we will bottom out right at 70 degrees in town. Then throughout the rest of the morning, we start to see the sun kind of pushing through the clouds or at least trying to by later on this morning, 78 degrees, 11 o'clock, 80 at noon. And the wind's going to also start to pick up out of the south southeast, 10, 15, 20 miles per hour, gusting to 25 at times. I think we have more clouds than sunshine, but some sunshine mixed in sort of like yesterday. And again, that gets us up to 88, which is still six, seven degrees above the average of the normal high temperature. And then we'll have partly cloudy skies tonight. Now with the humidity, even though it does drop somewhat in the afternoon, we will still have a heat index up to 91 here in town and getting into the mid and upper 90s as you go out to the west over toward the, the Rio Grande Valley. Morning clouds, afternoon sunshine mixed in with some of those clouds. Uh, a few showers well off there in the mountains of Mexico. I don't think we have to worry about anything with that. And we do that same again 24 hour cycle each and every day over the next few days. A few morning sprinkles around here or some mist and drizzle. We even have a little bit of drizzle around here this morning and then sunshine in the afternoon on Saturday. Same thing starting off on Sunday, but then the difference is we get the chance of rain starting to work its way in here later Sunday as a front is actually going to be working its way across the area. Some showers, a few thunderstorms, and this is is going to be then overnight Sunday into early Monday morning. 
Now again, this does not mean everybody's going to be getting rain constantly, but this is one of the better chances for some widespread decent rain that we've had around here in a long time. And this is going to continue on through the day on Monday and even into early, early Tuesday morning. We'll still have a couple of leftover showers as it's looking right now. Then we'll start to clear on out in behind that. So it's that big low up there to the uh, northwest of us. Now it's not going to really get close enough. Most of the energy and that seems to be the situation or you know, every time we get a chance for some rain, most of it has been well up to the north, and that's going to be the situation again with this. But it will be close enough, and with all this humidity around here, to give us that shot at some rain. And then also, this little bit of a kink right here in the upper level steering winds, that's what's helping to pull that front on through. And so that's what's going to be cooling us down by Monday as well as Tuesday. Actually, Tuesday morning going to be on the coolish side. 80 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature today is going to make it up to 88 degrees at about 2 to 3 degrees, and that's what it will feel like. Not ridiculously high heat index readings, but just enough to make you notice it. And the next few days, again, very consistent. That same 24-hour cycle, more humidity, clouds in the morning, slightly lower humidity in the afternoon, but still enough out there. Upper 80s, close to 90. And then that chance of rain late Sunday into Monday and 78 for a high temperature on Monday. Wow, okay. Looking promising. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll need that after a hot weekend. Oh, yeah, indeed. Yeah, I'm looking at my backyard going, I need rain, so. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 649, about 72 degrees. And the group Earthship Biotechture takes care of Earth by building homes that takes care of planet Earth. And you, tomorrow on GMSA, Sarah Costa introduces us to someone who knows firsthand the benefits of an Earthship home. Outside with live cam on your Thursday morning, grab another cup of coffee. We'll get you updated and check back in with Stephen on the morning commute so far right here on GMSA. Coming up here on day four of our epic EV road trip. We have so much to get to on GMA, but we are going to be looking at which vehicle might be right for your family. I'm right here along I-75 as we make our way down and talk all about the savings and the challenges of electric cars. But we've got to get to so much, so many other stories. Coming up on GMA, you're going to see that mask confusion. The Justice Department now appealing the ruling to end the mask mandate, launching the action at the request of the CDC. We'll tell you what it could mean for traveling this summer. And it's going to be important because Americans are getting ready for a summer of revenge travel. Wow. How you can still get a deal and get away with the demand driving prices up. And Robin's going one on one with Magic Johnson. We hope you'll join us right here on GMA. A driver who it seems did not want a traffic ticket now has a whole court case and criminal charges to face. Good morning. I'm Katrina Weber. The police tell us this is a result of a struggle between that man and a Via Metropolitan Transit police officer in the parking lot of this high rise apartment building. Now this came around two o'clock this morning. It involved both Via police and San Antonio police taking that man into custody. They got him in custody on the fourth floor level of the Baldwin apartments parking lot. Police say a VIA officer had tried to stop the driver for running a stop sign nearby. Instead of pulling over, they say the man drove into the elevated parking lot, then fought with the VIA officer. The driver now faces a whole list of charges, including driving while intoxicating and assaulting a police officer. And that officer had to be taken to a hospital for treatment of a possible broken thumb. Police tell us they are looking for a second person who was in the car and ran away. Reporting from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Governor Greg Abbott is set to be in town today, and there is a lot on the agenda and on the minds of many Texans is law enforcement issues and safety. You see, Texas is still dealing with border policy changes the governor implemented, including truck inspections, and critics say the move has cost Texans money and put a strain on the supply chain. Last week, DPS troopers were told to stop every commercial truck and check for things like tire pressures, headlamps and engines. Abbott says he ended those extra inspections after working out a deal with governors in Mexico. DPS troopers are scheduled to be a part of today's roundtable discussion. It will start at 3.30 at the main office for the Deputy Sheriff's Association of Bear County. And of course, this is a story we will follow throughout the day. Make sure to keep up with the latest in our later newscasts and, of course, on KSAT.com. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News.
Trouble over on the northwest side. Let's get a view at Transguy. Now, there's no label at this camera, but we have to show you that if there is a crash involving two vehicles, not sure if the drivers experienced any injuries, but we are seeing a slowdown in the westbound lanes of 1604 right there at Babcock, and we still have this crash off Loop 410 eastbound down here at Roosevelt Avenue, Mike. Thank you very much. Lots of clouds hanging around, around here this morning, and we have temperatures. There we go in the low 70s. A lot of humidity. Temperatures are going to be getting up into the upper 80s later on today. It's going to be breezy, plenty of humidity, and some sunshine sneaking through. All right, more traffic and weather coming up throughout Good Morning America, which yeah. is next. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you back here at 9.